Hey guys, it's Alyssa here over at Books and Cats, and today I'm coming at you with my February wrap up. I always plan to have videos regularly filmed, but life is crazy right now. I was in the hospital for a week, like as of a couple days ago. Health has not been great. I'm currently, I would say, not okay, but I'm trying to get on the track to be okay. So I'm coming at you with my February wrap-up. Surprisingly, even though I've been sick, <laughs> I've been able to read a fair amount, which I'm super happy about. I was able to knock off four books off of my TBR, and from my most recent video, you will see that I also unhauled a bunch of books, which is pretty fantastic as well. I'm getting my TBR under control, I am keeping things that I'm excited about. Going with the theme of my most recent wrap-ups, I'm going to be doing um, most favorite to least favorite. I read eight things in the month of February, which I'm quite happy with. One of them was a DNF, but I'm counting it as a red because I read so much of it. Let's talk about my DNF first because I don't know where to put that in like the ranking. The first book that I shall be talking about, which is a book that I DNF'd, was Don't You Cry by Mary Kubica. I always say that wrong. I was reading this on vacation when I was in Florida, and I DNF'd it at 150 pages because I thought one of the main characters was very annoying. I thought he was a whiny male who was boring and was just following and like kind of being a stalker to this like one-of-a-kind girl that he thought was just so cool and interesting. I was just bored. I was beyond bored. Like it was another level of boredom with this book. The plot wasn't doing anything. Like literally nothing had happened in the 150 pages that I had read, which was almost half the book. Nothing. I put it down. But you will see in an interesting turn of events what happened later on in the month. I'm already doing this wrong. I already am like trying to do it in like chronological order of when I read them. And I've already told myself so many times, Alyssa, that's not how we're doing it. And I keep trying to do it. <sighs> the next book that I shall be mentioning is Miss Marvel Volume 7, 7, Damage Per Second. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars because it was phenomenal best volume in the series so far. It was fantastic. I feel like this is a series that at first people are kind of like, eh, that's how I felt. I was kind of like, eh, I'm not really like super into it, but like I'll keep reading it because like she's such an interesting character and like she brings so much to the table and <sighs> I cannot recommend this comic series enough. In my opinion, it just keeps getting better. So if you were hesitant on the first couple volumes, I would keep giving it a shot. The next book that I shall be talking about, which is the, whoa, what, whoa, whoa, that, had that happened? Like what crazy turn of events? I read a book off my physical TBR. I read this book for thriller a -thon. Um, I did only complete one book for thriller a -thon. It was a very loose CBR. It was mostly, I wanted to get a video up. So I put up books that I was hoping I could maybe get to over that week, but I did actually finish a book. This was one of my favorite books of the month. It was off of my physical TBR and it blew my freaking mind. I'm still thinking about it, which is really impressive. And that is The Good Girl by Mary Kubica, which you're wondering, didn't you DNF and hate a book literally in the same month? Yes, I did. Yes, I did, by the same author. I DNF'd one of her books. But this, this, my dear friends, was wonderful. Throughout this entire book, I'm like, hmm, this is probably gonna be like a 3.5 3 to 4, maybe, tops. Like, that's lucky, but like probably like three, three and a half star book. It was all right. I was feeling, you know, I was, I was like, I'm interested. I'm interested, this is interesting, I'm, I'm feeling this. And then the ending happened and like blew my mind. How this wrapped up had never occurred in my mind. I had never thought of it. Like it was a new unexpected thing, which is, you know, I, I, I think too much sometimes. And 
to have something that totally shocked me and totally like took my breath away and like left me just sitting there being like that's that's a good ending to me I know this book has very polarizing like opinions on it a lot of people don't like it I thought it was great I gave it a five out of five stars if you're new to thrillers I recommend this I don't know if people who have read a lot of thrillers this isn't that great for them but I'm pretty new to thrillers and this was great for me I enjoyed it and I'm happy that I read it and that I own it that's exciting like I own like a new fave which is cool the next book was another book off my physical TBR and that was the ersatz elevator by lemony snicket this is the sixth book in the series of unfortunate events series and let me tell you this was great I had a great time um, I altered between reading it physically and listening to the audiobook Tim Curry narrating this highly recommend this was really good I thought the plot was good I thought it was unexpected which for these usually isn't the case for me usually I am expecting everything that happens in these but it was kind of unexpected to me and I am excited to read the next one. Gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next book I read was an arc that I got through NetGalley and that was Dropkick Romance by Cyrus Parker. <sighs> I have so many feelings for this book. I first heard about Cyrus Parker because he is married to Amanda Lovelace who is the author of A Princess Saves Herself in this one and The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. Two of two poetry books that I have also read and enjoyed so I was excited to get to his work and I was impressed. I loved all of the themes that he explored in this one. It deals a lot with like bad rela like relationships going bad and you know and kind of turning it around and then finding good relationships and I really loved it because it didn't sound bitter. Um, which I really loved because I've read past poetry books where people just sound kind of bitter and it didn't read like that to me. It read just as like really emotional. It really took a toll, you know, on on the person who is writing these things. So I highly recommend it. Um, I thought it was great. I'm excited to see more from him in the future. The next book that I read is another e arc from Nick Galley and that is Hurting Cats by Sarah Anderson. This is the third book in the Sarah Scribbles collection. If you haven't seen them where have you been always a fun time four out of five stars i love them i think they're great they're the most relatable comics i've personally read they're just like super relatable to like living in this time being a young person if you're looking for something that's relatable funny kind of ha 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 i get that like that that that's me i do recommend i did like how at the end of the book she went specifically into um kind of a how to be a creator on like like of art online and like kind of like a how-to guide and it was really cute i liked it it didn't apply to me not my zone of expertise not gonna become that but i thought it was cool so if you're looking for more information on that how she personally feels about it I, I would recommend this. The next book that I shall be talking about is Bell's Library, a collection of literary quotes and inspirational musings by, I don't know who it's by, I think it's just by Disney. This was super cute. I bought this a couple months ago because I love Beauty and the Beast and it's a pretty book. That's what this is. It's a pretty book. It takes a bunch of quotes from other books and then it gives you quotes I'll show you. It gives you the quotes, like the literary quotes on one side, and then Belle's like viewpoint on the other side with like some of her drawings and stuff. It's super cute. I'll reread it eventually in the future. I gave it a three out of five stars. Didn't blow my mind, but I'm gonna keep it because I love Beauty and the Beast and it was just cute. I liked it. Next book is an unpopular opinion. And I feel really bad having such an unpopular opinion about this book because like it's such an important book for so many people and like I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hated it. <laughs> really am. But that is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Leangle. I gave this a 2.5. Guys, guys, this was hard to get through. Like if it wasn't like 
200 something pages. I would have DNF'd it because that's how boring this was. Like, ugh. I feel like sometimes you can read a book from like the, you know, 60s. I think that's when this was written. I think this was written in the 60s. I think. Yeah, 62. I feel like sometimes you can read something that's old, but still find some kind of thing to relate to. And I couldn't relate to anything in this book. I thought the main character was annoying as heck. Um, I just thought she was kind of childish for how old she actually was. There's a lot that they don't explain and just like didn't give you enough to bring up your own imagination. I just maybe if I was a kid and I had read this I would have thought it was much more whimsical. I just didn't like it. Pros were that I liked how she did push through and did things even though she didn't feel very brave and she didn't want to do them and she was scared. And I think that's a great message for kids. Like sometimes you don't want to do things and sometimes it's scary and like you don't know the outcome, but like you do it for the people that you love. I like that message. It was a great message. I still think children should read this. Um, but I just, I'm not gonna continue the series because it just was weird didn't care for it. I really love this cover. Like something about this is like super cool to me and I'm just like really shocked that I didn't enjoy it. I'm just amazed at how much I didn't like this. The very last book I shall be talking about is Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris, which I gave a whopping two stars because it was horrible. I again got this through NetGalley and it was terrible. It was boring like if i thought don't you cry was boring this was beyond boring and beyond predictable the twist at the end was just not only unbelievable like i i, I like physically i was just like i don't believe that this could actually happen i hated everyone i hated every single character you're not set up to like any of them you're not you're not set up to love or hate any of them like you're just kind of like you all kind of suck you know it's like one of those books the plot was really boring and like i kind of guessed what was going on from the very beginning from like a seed that the author had specifically planted and i just don't think it was i didn't think the plot was well written i didn't like the writing style I thought it was boring I thought it felt like just it felt like a boring diary of someone going through something not like a, a novel uh, I didn't like it I didn't like it I didn't like any parts of it but that's all I got that's the eight things I read in February which I'm super proud with considering how much my life is terrible right now. Also got new glasses. I also got new glasses. I love these glasses. I had to get rid of the clear ones because honestly, filming was a, a, a mess filming with clear glasses because just like reflection off reflection off reflection and it just wasn't a good time. If you've read any of these books, please let me know down below. I would love to know. I don't know when I can next upload. It's very sporadic at this point. Basically, whenever I can and am able-bodied to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope I can see you again soon. And I'll just see you when I see you. Bye.